There's been a lot of talk about the wide receivers in the 2024 NFL draft, but you can make the argument that this next guy might be one of the best pass catcher prospects we have ever seen in the last five to 10 years or so. Brock Bowers, tight end from the University of Georgia. We're going to be telling the whole story of him from start to finish. What should you do with this guy in your rookie drafts? You're not going to want to miss it. Now let's get into it. All right, Brock Bowers, tight end of the University of Georgia Bulldogs, two-time national championship tight end, six foot three and some change, 243 pounds, officially weighed in at the NFL Scouting Combine. He was born December 13th, 2002, just 21.4 years old on the night of the NFL draft, about a week and a half away from today. He was a four-star recruit from Napa, California, the second-ranked tight end in his high school recruiting class. Ironically, only behind Jatavian Sanders, Texas tight end, consensus-wise the tight end two in this year's class, who was a five-star athlete coming out in 2021. So, Brock Bowers came in as a true freshman gangbusters. In his true freshman season, he posted a 23.35% receiving yards market share in the SEC as an 18-year-old for the eventual national champion. And I know that's a lot of mumbo jumbo, a lot of numbers there, but a 23.35 receiving yards market share as a freshman is the best that has ever been recorded in campus to Canton's database for the tight end position, especially when you contextualize that it wasn't some slappy, random South Dakota State school he was doing it for. It was the eventual national champion winning Georgia Bulldogs. So that has never happened before. He ranked top three in the country as a true freshman with 3.01 yards per out run, a 91.6 PFF receiving grade, and he led the country in touchdowns at the tight end position with 13. That was an absurd freshman season. That got him on the dynasty radar very quickly. In 2022, he built upon that, posting 942 yards and seven touchdowns, again, posting top three marks in receiving grade, touchdowns, and yards per route run with 2.37. So great start to his career, freshman, sophomore year, looking like the best tight end prospect we'd ever seen. In 2023, he did take a small step back production-wise after suffering a high ankle sprain in Week 7 against Vanderbilt midway through the season, but he still ranked second in the country with a 2.65 yards per out run, sixth in the country with an 87.1 PFF receiving grade. I mean, the two games leading up to his injury went for like 165 yards against Auburn, 132 yards the next game, scoring two touchdowns. It was unfortunate that he suffered that injury-riddled season this year, but even in his down year, quote unquote, is still an elite season for a regular tight end prospect. Just by Brock Bauer's standards, it was a down season. So again, when you look at the experience adjusted receiving yards market share, you can see him versus the current dynasty tight end one, Sam Laporta, as well as Kyle Pitts, who was the last generational tight end prospect that we saw. Brock Bowers killed him in the freshman season. Brock Bowers beat him out in the sophomore year. And then of course, like I said, the down junior season was more so on par with Kyle Pitts even though he could have been better had he stayed healthy this season. So when you look at expected draft position, where he's expected to go in the NFL draft, Brock Bowers is expected to be a top 10 NFL draft pick. The Jets at 10 being the most common spot slotted to him in mock drafts. And I do believe that is where he'll eventually get selected. Just knowing how many mocks I've done so far and kind of how the board shapes up to be, I do believe the Jets will be the team that pulls the trigger on Brock Bowers in the NFL draft. I actually put a bet down on it. I think it's like plus 140 right now that he goes to the New York Jets. The fundamental traits for tight ends and evaluating them are very similar to wide receivers because we're talking about pass catchers here, getting open, catching the football, doing something with it. That's all important at the tight end position. The only real difference is that, you know, production profile and athleticism are weighted even a little bit heavier. And you also have the factor of blocking and versatility and that kind of thing. So, of course, we're going to start with separation ability and route running. This plays a little bit differently at tight end than it does for wide receivers because at tight end, you're not usually lining up on the outside against press man coverage at tight end you're usually lining up 
in line or in the slot and having to beat zone coverage more often than man coverage, which is something that's different for wide receivers. Bowers was in the slot on 52% of his routes over his career at the University of Georgia, and he was in line for 36% of his routes. So naturally, he's a little bit more prone to get a lot of production playing more as a slot option than an in-line option, but he's such a gifted separator. It is no shock. That is why Georgia used him that way. Me and Danny broke down his film on our film breakdown on the site, Flock Fantasy. You can get all of our film breakdowns. Bowers is live right now in addition to like the top eight or so wide receivers. But this dude has this uncanny ability to break off his routes halfway in between two defenders against zone. When you're against zone coverage, usually you're having to work behind a linebacker and ahead of a safety. And Brock Bowers does that better than anybody in this entire class, pretty much any tight end that I've really ever seen, including NFL tight ends. His footwork, his head and shoulder fakes, they're elite for the tight end position. He dominated man coverage on the rare occasions that teams were stupid enough to try and actually man him up. He is a naturally gifted separator that we broke down in that video. He is virtually uncoverable. His route running and his separation ability are the best I've ever seen for a tight end prospect, including Kyle Pitts, because tight ends don't usually have the nuance to their route running that Brock Bowers does. Even though Kyle Pitts was a slightly better athlete than Brock Bowers, and he would win with that athleticism more so than nuance and football IQ, the ability to win with all of those factors is what makes Brock Bowers a better prospect, in my opinion, than Kyle Pitts. Against zone coverage, like I said, he understands the coverage. He gets to his landmarks fast. The best route running tight end prospect I've ever seen, better than Pitts, better than King Cade, better than Laporta, better than Michael Mayer. He is an absolute mammoth as a route runner. So after you get open, got to catch the football. He dropped the odd pass. He had a 4.4% drop rate, eight drops on 224 targets, but he's virtually automatic. I mean, eight drops on 224 targets is not a big deal. He posted a career contested catch rate of 59%. So despite a down contested catch rate of 22% in 2023 when he was injured, his rates in 2022 were 76.5%. In 2021, as a true freshman, it was 61.5%. So in two of his three seasons, he was absolutely dumb dominant in contested catches and anytime you just like watch the film he showed you how he wins versus contact the football IQ he has at the catch point is immaculate he understands that you know when you're going up for a contested catch you have to subtly create that late separation don't show your hands too early or the defender is going to notice that he understands all of those little things there's a play that me and Danny broke down in the film breakdown for Brock Bowers where he's going over the middle against the University of Auburn and there's two safeties bearing down on him he snags the ball with one hand and pulls it and tucks it to the opposite side so that his hand that he caught the ball with initially is free to stiff arm the defender. He does this all in a split second. He's not thinking about it. It's instinctual. Most tight ends would have caught the ball with two hands and fallen down. What Brock Bowers does, snags it with one hand to just show off how arrogant his hands are. And then again, not only tuck it in with the hand you caught it with and corral it with two hands, he tucks it into his opposite ball hand, switches hands and tries to stiff arm a defender defender in a split second. So that is just how special the instincts are with this guy. Catch point fundamentals are just impossible to teach. Honestly, you can't teach someone's ability to be that natural at the catch point. His career drop grade for PFF also was over 81 in every single season of his career. So you're looking at a guy that very rarely is going to let you down when you throw the football his way. Once you get the football in his hands, man, yards after catch ability, 8.5 yards after catch per reception in his career. That is a absurd number for a tight end. 9.3 yards after catch per reception as a true freshman, 18 year old back in 2021. The guy's a gazelle, man. He looks like Sam Laporta. He looks like George Kittle. He looks like these elite athlete tight ends that we've seen over the course of the last couple of years. And what makes him different from a Kyle Pitts, a Noah Fant, some of these guys that haven't quite been able to put it all together above the shoulders is that his instincts are so strong that he can find the green grass easily. He can break the tackles because he's tough enough. He forced a missed tackle on 25% of his catches over the course of his career. To contextualize how stupid of a number that is for a tight end, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, and A.J. Brown did that in their college career. So we're talking about elite yards after catch receivers. He's that good after the catch at the tight end position, breaking off tackles of linebackers and safeties. 
the odd corner that decides to cover him, that kind of thing. So with Brock Bowers, I mean, when it comes to the three fundamental traits of getting open, catching the football, and doing something with it, he nails them for the tight end position. The production profile, too, is the best we've ever seen. Not exaggerating. This is the best production profile we have ever seen for a tight end prospect. I mentioned all of those elite numbers already, but a reminder, top five in the country every year of his college career in yards per route run, target share, receiving grade, touchdowns, all that good stuff. Don't overthink this profile, fellas. It is elite. Great tight end prospects are lucky if they have one season as good as Brock Bowers' three individual seasons. Kincaid, Michael Mayer, Sam Laporta, all these good prospects we've seen over the last couple years had one year like Brock Bowers' 2022 or 2023. None of them had a year like his 2021 true freshman campaign. If you look at a tweet here from Dynasty IM, there has only been four tight ends drafted in the top 12 overall picks. And there has never been a tight end prospect to post 15 plus experience adjusted PPR points per game in every collegiate season until Brock Bowers. He is potentially the best tight end prospect from a fantasy perspective that we have ever seen come out of college. Number five on this list is, of course, athleticism. And this is where he's going to lose a little, little bit of points because he didn't test at the combine. He didn't test at his pro day. The numbers that I'm pulling here for his RAS score are from high school uh, scouting from recruiting on 24 seven and Bruce Feldman's freaks list. He has connections inside the Georgia building. He has some legitimate numbers here. You guys can see an 8.67 unofficial RAS score. Conservatively speaking, because I took, I saw four fours reported as his 40 time. It was conservatively projected that he ran a 4.53 at Georgia's Pro Day prior to doing any of the drills. So I went with 4.53, but there was reports of 4.48, 4.49. Yeah, he's slightly undersized and he's going to lose points for that at six foot three and a bit, 243 pounds. He's not six foot six, 250. But to be honest with you, six foot six, 250 pound tight ends are blocking most of the time. He's slightly undersized. So was Sam Laporta. He was six, three and a half, 245 pounds. Same with George Kittle, six foot four, 245 pounds. So I would definitely argue that his size is an advantage when it comes to the role that he is going to play, which is an open field gazelle with the ball in his hands, not an inline blocking tight end. Speaking of blocking, number six fundamental trait for the tight end position is blocking because I'm sure everybody listening to this video right now wants to know a simple question. Is he going to get on the field? Is he going to get snaps or is he going to be taken off the field because he is a liability as a blocker? And the answer is emphatically he is a capable enough blocker to maintain a high snap share. Pass blocking grades over the course of his career all in the 70s with a 99.3% pass blocking efficiency in true pass sets. So we're looking at a guy good enough pass blocker. In 2021, 28th among 262 tight ends in run blocking grade. 2022, 19th among 287 tight ends in run blocking grade. In 2023, he fell off a little bit. Like I said, he was dealing with injuries. 68th among 301 tight ends. So again, Brock Bowers, is he the best tight end blocker in the world? No. Is he a very good blocker, especially considering he is an undersized prospect who's an early declare, just 19 18 and 20 years old on the tapes that we're watching of him. absolutely. freaking lutely A lot of these guys, Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporta, these guys were seniors and fifth year seniors coming out and they weren't as good of blockers as Brock Bowers is. So that just speaks to how much left he can still learn in this area. Some of the subjective traits that factored into Brock Bowers grade for me was, I mean, the fact that he's literally a generational tight end prospect. The NFL is very high on him. Brock Bowers is a similarly elite athlete to Kyle Pitts, not quite as elite as Kyle Pitts, but he is a complete tight end above the shoulders, man. The little things have been the downfall for some of these athletic tight ends. Kyle Pitts, Noah Fant, they never figured it out or haven't figured it out yet above the shoulders. He is smart. He is tough. He's durable. He was playing through injury all year. He's just 21 years old, so he's definitely capable of improving. He's a winner, which doesn't really matter for anything except for the fact that he also is a two-time national championship uh, winning tight end, and he was the best player on his offense both years of the national championship. So with Brock Bowers, he checks literally every box. He's the Marvin Harrison of tight end prospects. My final grade for him is 94 out of 100, a generational grade that I have given just five of Since 2021, in my time scouting with my current process, the only generational grades I've given were Trevor Lawrence, only quarterback I've given that grade to, Kyle Pitts, the only other tight end I've given that grade to, Bijan Robinson, the only running back I've given that prospect grade to, and Marvin Harrison at wide receiver, the only wide receiver I've given that grade to. So we got two generational tight ends, 
one running back, one wide receiver, and one quarterback in the last four years of me scouting five prospects in total. So I don't use the generational term lightly. My biggest weakness really to his game, like I said, was the fact that larger rushers could disrupt him in the run game. The fact that he is slightly, only slightly undersized for the position. And some of the numbers in 2023 did regress a little bit. But like I said, 157 yards against Auburn, two games before the injury, 132 yards uh, in the next game two touchdowns over the course of the, uh, those last two games and 21 targets in those last two games leading up to that injury. So Brock Bowers, had he not gotten injured in 2023, probably has a career best season, if not matching his numbers in 2021 and 2022. My pro comparison for him is Sam Laporta. They're the same size, the same skill set, only Bowers is a better prospect in every aspect than Sam Laporta was. So I'm talking about this guy being a better prospect than the current Dynasty tight end one. A better version of Sam Laporta is available after f- the first five, six picks of your Dynasty Superflex rookie drafts this year. That's how good this class is. Brock Bowers would have been probably 102, 103, 104 in last year's class. He is 106, 107, 108 in this year's class. The ideal landing spot for him is probably like the Bengals if they were to trade T. Higgins and trade up for Bowers. But realistically, I think the best landing spot for him is the New York Jets for a number of reasons. Number one, they only have one solidified weapon in Garrett Wilson. He can be the number two in his offense. They're in need of both a receiver and offensive line help with their 10th overall pick. And to me, Brock Bowers accomplishes both things. He he helps your offensive line, helps your pass blocking, helps your run blocking, and he's a great receiver that he helps your receiving core. So why not go with Brock Bowers when you're caught between those two positions? You can use Bowers 40 to 50% of the time in the slot. You can use him 40 50 50% of the time in line. You can hand him the ball. You can do other things with him as well. He's extremely versatile. Nathaniel Hackett comes from that LaFleur Shanahan tree who deploy tight ends like George Kittle and Josiah DeGuara and guys like that in very versatile ways. Aaron Rodgers, of course, likes smart, reliable players, which is exactly what Brock Bowers is. He won't make mistakes. He won't drop passes. He won't be where he's not supposed to be, even though he's a rookie. It's a match made in heaven, in my opinion. The Jets are the perfect landing spot for Brock Bowers. He is my tight end two right now in Dynasty, only behind Sam Laporta. And honestly, the second he shows production, he will be ahead of Sam Laporta. I am comfortable spending a top three to five startup pick in tight end premium, non-tight end premium formats. I would not be shocked at all if this guy is the tight end one by week four of his rookie season and a top 15 startup pick as a result. In rookie drafts, it feels insane to say this, that you're getting this guy at 106, 107, 108, which is where he's ranked for me, pending your need for a tight end. The value of the quarterback position is such that those guys have to go ahead The wide receivers in this class are that good. We have elite trio of wide receiver prospects. So I have them all ranked ahead of Brock Bowers. But honestly, unless you have Sam Laporta, you should be drafting this guy 106, 107, 108. If you have David Njoku as your tight end and you're like, I don't need Brock Bowers, trust me, you need Brock Bowers. He's that good of a prospect. Just trade David Njoku, trade George Kittle, trade whatever tight end you think you don't need to take Brock Bowers because you have, you need Brock Bowers. He's that good of a prospect. So that is the end of the video. If you guys want the full film breakdown, I really highly suggest you check it out because we went in depth with what makes Brock Bowers so special. All those little things, that's where you're going to see it is in the film breakdown and all of the film breakdowns that we have live right now. We got eight wide receivers. We got Brock Bowers up. We're still going to ta- uh, tackle the top six quarterbacks as well as the top two running backs in this year's class and probably Keon Coleman and Xavier Leggett at wide receiver still uh, as well. Head on over to flockfantasy.com. Use the promo code FSE for seven days for free. Six months for free when you sign up annually. The Dynasty wide receiver prospect model is officially done. We're still figuring a way how to get it onto the site that looks the best. So that will be coming definitely in the next couple weeks, but uh, probably at least before you guys have your rookie draft. So all that stuff is available on the site. One last update coming to the Dynasty Rookie Draft Guide as well. That'll be coming out next week prior to the NFL Draft. And then post-NFL Draft, we'll have one more update to it with sleepers, with values, with busts, and all that kind of stuff. So if that interests you, definitely check it out down below in the pinned comment and in the description. But with that being said, peace out, and we'll talk to you soon.